What's going on Babylonians? It's me Songs of Rays and I'm back with some more Miasma Chronicles videos to be able to bring to the channel. Now today we're going to be discussing everything to do with the companion called Jade, who is a companion that you get fairly early on in the story and is one of the first ones that you do encounter leading up to that first boss fight. Now Jade is very special when it comes to this game because she brings something that none of the other characters that you had at the time when it comes to your party are able to do and that's going to be stealth takedowns. So in this video I'm going to discuss everything that's amazing about Jade, best way to be able to gear her up, the best way to be able to have a look into her skill deck and then be able to work from there to be able to give you the best fighting chance you have of being able to take down the majority of an army before you get into a fight. But before we go any further, if you do enjoy this type of content, if you are looking forward to more Miasma Chronicles content to be able to come your way, especially when that game does fully launch, then make sure to drop in a like and subscribe, it really does help the channel out, and let you know where we are to be able to watch some more of this content coming your way. But with all that said and done, let's get right into it. Alright, so first and foremost, Jade is going to be our sniper, kind of reconnaissance type character that's designed to be able to go out there, to be able to have that long range kind of like uh, kind of like support in terms of fights and everything like that. She has a very deadly weapon that is in the X1G silent ice gun and she, she basically thrives when it comes to high ground, being able to support you from afar. Now that's not all that this gun can do for you because it is a great way of being able to thin the herd and be able to take down targets effectively and suppressed to be able to then start working your way around and to be able to take down the majority of a fight or to be able to take down the majority of a force before you even get into an ambush kind of situation to be able to require the use of Elvis as well as Diggs. The Silent Ice Gun at standard has some really decent stats attached to it as well, with a standard damage of 70 with critical damage at 110. Now unfortunately because of the suppressor it does suffer a little bit when it comes to range compared to other sniper rifles, so you do need to factor that in a little bit. You'll be surprised as to uh, what, what the range it can actually do, but the range that it actually performs well in as well. And unfortunately it is a single shot, meaning that if, after you've taken your shot you do need to reload. Now the only time that you don't need to worry about that is if you are planning an ambush and you are suppressively taking down targets one at a time, being able to go into a fight, fire that one shot, kill the target without being seen, and then go come straight back out to combat, it instantly reloads your weapon so you don't need to worry about that. The special ability that's attached to this weapon though is 20% crit chance at all distances on this, meaning that you at base have a 25% chance of being able to crit, and you are able to be able to increase this with it in terms of like where targets are, uh, in terms of like the battlefield, and also through, through the uses of your perks when it comes to your skill deck. But the main reason we use this is because it is silent during an ambush, and that's the main way to be able to start thinning a herd. You'll see some gameplay that's in the background to be able to show you how effective this can actually be, and because it kind of works off the main base damage, you kind of only want to take down to, uh, targets that are 70 health or less, but obviously you can increase the amount of damage that this gun can do, but we'll talk about modifying in a short while. This allows Jade to be able to chain from kill to kill to kill, when, especially when it comes to smaller, some of the smaller enemies that exist inside of Miasma Chronicles, and it's just really worthwhile to be able to take those down before you go into a proper fight, because all of a sudden you can take down an army from 10 to, say, maybe down to 5, and that makes it so much easier on yourselves. Alright, so we've discussed everything to do with that, then let's have a look at modifying the gun to be able to maximise its effectiveness. Now because this gun is primarily reliant on that main damage stat, because the criticals aren't as reliable to be able to go into a kind of an ambush or anything like that, it's still a percentage chance, meaning that the only way to be able to get a guaranteed critical hit is if you manage to get your rage bar all the way up to 100, meaning that you do need to take down 10 targets bleeding up to that to be able to get that guaranteed crit to be able to take something down with 110 health. So if we have a quick look into how I've currently got this modified is to be able to maximise the effectiveness of this, we do have the scope of uh, Ambusher Light where it adds 10% crit chance during an ambush and this is perfect for this because it allows you to be able to increase it as a flat 10%. So you have gone from 5% which is the standard kind of crit chance that you would have depending on any kind of like character that goes into a fight and then you've got the 20% which is base for this gun and then we have an additional 10% because we are using that ambush effectively. So we go all the way up to a standard of 35%. This is especially important because we will be looking at the skill deck very, very shortly to be able to maximise the chances of being able to land those critical shots. So you increase those even to be more in your favour and become more likely to be able to apply. In terms of the weapon mod though, we do have gone for the Vile E damage rounds which increases the base damage by 10. Now most of the time this doesn't really kind of factor into it, it's definitely something that's a bit more uh, kind of like nuanced in, in, in that case because most of the time the, the, the 70 is more than enough. The only time that this will come into question is if the target you are shooting has 70 base health and 1 point of armour, because the point of armour will take away 10 points of your damage, meaning that we can go through 1 point of armour and still get the kill with this. 
Other things to be able to mess around with when it comes to that is probably going to try maybe increasing its magazine size, but that will increase its lethality when it comes to the actual kind of like firefight instead of actually the ambush side of things. Now these mods that I've talked about you can access very quickly and very early on in the game so it should be fairly easy for you to be able to maximise the effectiveness of this rifle and to be able to use it through the majority of your fights. Now if it was just purely this then Jade would already be a top tier character to be able to start weakening some of the firefights that you're going to be leading yourself into. So let's have a look into what makes the rest of the build work and that is going to be more to do with the skill deck. So if you have a quick look into the skill deck itself, you can see that we do have access to 16 perks, but currently I only have the four going, and that's just purely based on the amount of skill points that I've got access to. Now if you want to increase Jade's lethality when it comes to actually fighting in terms of that, then the stats tree is going to be where it's at, because not only does this increase the amount of movement, or uh, kind of like the, the amount of tiles that they can move from walking and sprinting, it also gives us extra ways to be able to increase the amount of base HP that they have, allowing them to be able to have a little bit more sustain when it comes to the fight. But the real winners are actually going to be these first two nodes that are down here on the bottom trees. And the first one we're going to have a quick look at is going to be Focus Shot. And what this does is it is a cooldown of five turns, so it is really long. But what this will do is using this will give you a 30% extra increased chance to be able to critical hit. So if you take what we talked about in the, into consideration a little bit earlier, we've got gone from a base critical chance multiplier of 5% all the way up to 35% through the use of modifying our weapon as well as having that 20% base increase from being able to use that weapon in the first place. And now we've used this skill to be able to increase it by another 30, meaning that we have a 65% chance of being able to land that critical hit, meaning that we can then start taking down scouts with 65% accuracy. This in of itself is an absolute must to be able to go for if you are looking to be able to do that stealth kind of playstyle, because while it isn't guaranteed, it is a great way of being able to actually increase your favour and to be able to start taking down targets that you normally wouldn't have been able to do. It's also a great way to factor in that if you do use it on the right targets, like I said, ones that have 110 HP and less, then you've got a great way of being able to take another enemy off the board before you then go into a proper firefight. But the one that's actually won my heart when it comes to this actual whole skill tree is going to be Plasma Shot, which is this one over here. And what this does is it deals 30 points of fire damage over 3 turns. Now, the way I initially read this meant that I thought it was going to be doing 10 points of damage for 3 turns, totaling up to that 30 fire damage. But in actual fact, how this works is that it will do 30 points of damage on the first turn, 30 points on the second turn, 30 points on that third turn. On top of that, because when you go into your ambush, you're actually starting an extra turn, meaning this will increase the base damage of your rifle. So you will be going from having that 80 damage because we've increased it by 10, to be able to go all the way up to 110, which is exactly the same as the amount of crit damage that we would have been doing. So you can treat this as it is a 100% crit chance of being able to take down a 110 HP enemy. Now, of course, if you don't have that extra damage on the rifle, then this will only do 100 points of damage, and that means that they will then be able to notify the rest of the enemy squad that are nearby to be able to then kick off the rest of the fight, and we want to try and avoid that where possible. So you do need to combine that 10 points of extra damage in terms of the rifle, as well as the, the damage that we will be doing from Plasma Shot to be able to get that guaranteed kill. Now, unfortunately, both of these are on long cooldowns, one being five and one being four, and unfortunately, those four turns will not cool down when you're outside of an ambush, uh, you do actually need to be inside of a combat scenario to be able to then start getting those cooldowns back. And uh, it's a little bit of a shame, but it does make it like keep it in line of not being overpowered or anything like that. Because otherwise you would just wait like maybe three to four seconds or something like that if that was the way it would work. And then you just have this instantly back and that would just mean you would decimate everything in your path. So I do think it's balanced in that sense. Uh, it's a little bit sad that it does that, but you know, it is completely fair. Uh, and But it just allows us to be able to have two abilities that give us a better chance of being able to take down extra time that we normally wouldn't have been able to do. But if we pair those two abilities, let's say that the uh, the crit chance were, did actually pay off when it comes to focus shot, if we pair those two abilities as well as on top of the rage uh, kind of bar that we have with the, every single one of our characters, meaning that we get a guaranteed critical shot with that as well, that means that if we could potentially take down three targets that have 110 HP, and we can do this suppressed, meaning that no one will be alerted if we do this without having it being looked over by another enemy. 
Now these do get even crazier if we do have a look into the cards, and so you can actually see that we get a little bit more effective when it comes to being able to deal that crit damage, especially when it comes to ambushes. If we did go a little bit further on Patient Hunter, we have the access to the passive skill of Hunter, which raises our standard critical chance bonus to 20% for ambush shots, so we do have that on top of that, meaning that all of a sudden we're now getting closer to that 85% if we did include the focus shot. We've got access to things like Nemesis, where we get 20% critical chance versus unharmed enemies, which you will be doing when it comes to ambushing and we also have things like ascender we get again an extra 20 percent critical chance to high ground shot so if you are able to use elevation to your advantage then you have that as well and then you also have things like focus shot 2 to be able to increase it from uh, 30 percent to up to 50 percent so we make up the difference there there are so many ways for us to be able to increase that and on top of that we also have corrosive shot to be able to do even more damage which is another ability having another cooldown allowing us to be able to deal even more damage on top of that Whichever way you look at it, Jade has an insane amount of stuff available in her arsenal and to her skill deck that makes her an absolute menace when it comes to being able to kickstart a fight off and to be able to actually take down and whittle down the army before you then go and properly engage and go loud. Now while I haven't seen access to the other companions just yet, I do think that Jade is going to be top tier in my eyes. Personally, as it currently stands, even though I haven't seen the, any of the other details when it comes to any of the other companions when it comes to this game, it's going to be hard to be able to dethrone Jade, especially seeing how much of the army she can actually take out before you get anywhere close to be able to start that firefight. Not only does it shorten the fight that you're going to be putting yourself into, it also lessens the chance of you being retaliated against and being knocked down. It lessens the chance of you failing because you will be taking out more units than were uh, possible to be able to do if you're going into a proper firefight. It's just insane and I genuinely think if you do play heavily into the stealth playstyle then Jade will reward you handsomely. But that is this guide We're all wrapped up and to be able to discuss everything to do with Jade, how I've managed to gear her up, best ways to be able to get it to work, how the skill decks kind of work in, tie in perfectly with this and all the synergies when it comes to that. Massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video, massive thank you to the Babylonian family as always for their continued support. If you did learn something useful with ourselves and you want to see more companion guides like this, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe for the channel so you know where you're able to come back to to be able to find those videos. But with all that said and done, that just leaves me to say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and I'll see you all on our next video.